that we are. Thank you so much, everybody, for joining this webinar. My name is Adrian Kosmaczewski. I'm Developer Relations at Vision. And this is the second NGINX uh, Zurich Meetup uh, meeting. And uh, it's organized jointly with uh, F5. F5 is the company that brings NGINX to the world. So it's an honor and a pleasure to have them uh, on, online with us uh, tonight. And they are going to talk about, uh, tonight we're going to talk about security, web application firewalls, and NGINX App Protect. So plenty of very nice demos coming up. Um, and uh, having said that, I leave the stage to Andrea Arquint and Mathieu Dierick uh, to show you this content. So thank you so much, guys, for joining. And have a nice evening, everybody. Thank you. So um, yeah, I will just uh, um, start because I will just do the presentation. Then Mathieu will, I will hand over to Mathieu. Mathieu will then uh, show you um, some demos about the content we deliver. Um, just from from my, for my uh, person, I've been working for F5 since eight years now. I'm field systems engineer in Switzerland, and I'm responsible for customers, partners, and doing POC, supporting you in those topics when it comes to to interests on your side. So, Mathieu, could you yeah. please? Uh... So, Mathieu Dirick, I'm based in Paris. I'm solution architect on security solution uh, in, for the EMEA region. Okay, good. Then uh, let's kick it off. So I will start with the presentation. Is it good uh, yeah. to see for anybody? Perfect. Uh, Is it perfect. Thank you so much. Okay. So then, um, yeah, as we introduced ourselves, let's um, go into the topic right away. Um, I, I just want to, to show you some um, a small amount of, of slides that, that we get into the context where, where we are talking about WAF and why we are talking about those, this topic, especially. So, um, yeah, I mean, we have a lot of sensitive data that, that uh, will be delivered into public clouds, into different architectures, which are not, um, let's say, anymore in this kind of traditional secure environment, um, as well as multi-cloud uh, approaches coming along that companies thinking about yeah, um, pulling their content um, to the specific cloud that is most valuable um, for a certain application, and as well API um, communication for business-to-business -business application communications are um, coming along when it comes to, to cloud deployment and, and security and so forth. So um, the, the traditional IT infrastructure is, is getting um, is getting a challenge, of course, because uh, they need to think about how we can uh, bring into security in those topics while it, it, is, um, it, it tends to time to market deployment, then it is very important to get um, all the security um, uh, uh, yeah, value that they were um, habited in, in the, the environments from before to be able to shift them into the modern environments, let's say. Um, this is, uh, from my point of perspective, very important because I had um, a, yeah, roughly about a decade ago a, a, a discussion about, yeah, does it make sense to publish web application firewall at all when, it, when applications behind are programmed securely? And and this is uh, very interesting because I had a discussion with, with a, a, yeah, let's say, um, CEO of a high school about it. Um, and we had a chat about how is secure applications are going to be produced. And he told me, um, we just rely or software developer that start software developing are just relying on let's say frameworks and all these kind of things because um, 
it it would completely overflow um, the 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 study uh, of software development when it actually comes to secure software development. So this means um, that web application firewall still is is valid and it it is getting more valid because as we see here that the CVs are increasing um, the attack attack vectors for web application firewall um, is increasing as well um, since a couple of years. Um, we, we just not see only um, attacks to, to, um, to destine uh, certain um, uh, weaknesses of applications. We see as well um, regular, uh, um, regular requests to application, normal user requests that could harm applications, for instance, when it comes to DDoS, et cetera, on, on application level and so forth. <clears throat> so then we need some logic in front of the application because some attack vectors could harm an application, even if the application, let's say, would be almost 100% uh, secured, programmed at the end. Um, there is where nginx app protect comes into the game so we have let's say three pillars strong application security built for modern apps and ci cd friendly so with this approach we make sure that only regular requests so valid user requests are targeting the application or goes down, uh, uh, towards the application in order to to get content out of it and on the other hand we make sure that attackers are, are getting blocked uh, when they try to, to do to act to the application as malicious requests. So strong application security um, is something that F5 traditionally um, is in the market since let's say more than a decade and, and has a well well done expertise. So F5 for instance has uh, the largest web application firewall install base on the planet. And within the evolution of Nginx and especially Nginx App Protect, um, Nginx developed the core functionality of F5's web application firewall technology basis on top of Nginx. And this is what is basically Nginx App Protect. So we, we customers can profit, of course, all um, uh, those advanced web application firewall features coming from the traditional web application firewall in order to deploy them in a modern application environment. So this um, yeah, covers, of course, API security, the OWASP top 10 um, stuff, but it goes um, beyond these OWASP top 10 topics, of course. Then built for modern web application, um, we see with Nginx, app, uh, uh, Nginx um, application security that we address, um, let's say the market that needs the application very quickly online. This is one of the most issues that we see um, that it's very tricky that those SecOps um, teams has issues in order to be that speedy that the normal application team is speedy and therefore security needs to be established as fast as possible um, without any delay as we see in the traditionally which takes months um, to make sure an application is getting secure on, on, on the web of course. So this brings me actually to the Nginx application protect um, a protect performance um, where we made some tests internally. Uh, we see on the throughput side, on the left hand side, um, that an application who is, of course, not protected gets a bigger throughput because there is nothing um, that could somehow um, do some, some latency or, 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 or breaking down the throughput because there is something into the traffic that needs to analyze traffic. This is, of course, some kind of a traffic break, let's say. Um, but when we um, compare those um, 
technologies, then we see that we are way faster, let's say, compared to mod security, which was um, the former base technology of, of Nginx when it comes to web application firewalls. Uh, security. So this is the same um, yeah, graph that goes along when it comes to requests. And even on the third graph, we see that latency is roughly the same, even if the application wouldn't have any web application firewall uh, performance. And this is, um, um, from my point of perspective, the, the one that is actually significant and relevant at the end in order to deploy a web application uh, security for the web application at the end. Then the third pillar is uh, CICD friendly. So of course we make sure that we are able um, to bring us into CICD pipelines. And I think this is actually the key where it comes to a, a automated way based on deployments that we would be able to, to uh, make sure that a web application firewall security policy goes along with the normal modern app um, deployment process in a CICD pipeline. So this is actually an example. So let's say um, the SecOps teams um, are responsible for the security for the application, for instance, or even the, dev, uh, the, the application developer itself. Um, this differs from company to company, of course. Um, but at the end, it's, it's let's say, a, a, a definition that the, the SecOp, SecOp responsible does define. In that particular case, he defines that all disallowed file types, for instance, should be deleted or should be blocked and push this via CI CD pipeline. In that case, it is Jenkins. And even if it, it, it needed to be automated at the end because of the environment, it could be sent to Ansible or whatever um, other automation tool that could uh, be kicked off by Jenkins, for instance, in order to deploy uh, the web application firewall policy. So this brings me actually at the end for this short presentation. So um, one pillar, strong application security. Um, the third one, built for modern apps. And because it's CI CD um, friendly in order to bring the policy alive via CI CD pipeline that goes along with the regular application development process. Okay, so then hand over to Mathieu. Thank you, Andrea. So guys, it's time to, to see a demo and how it works exactly. I uh, just wait for Andrea to stop sharing. Yes. I will show you my environment. You will see it's very easy. Okay. Thank you, Andrea. Let's go. Okay. So this is my this is my environment. So it's honestly it's an environment in a, in AWS, uh, as you can see. This is an F5 on, um, framework to make demo, and the goal is to show you the the NAP, so the Nginx app protect. Or I can deploy it uh, with a CI CD. Okay, so I can install it manually, and it's very easy. So the most important is to go to um, to docs.nginx.com. And on the left side here, you go to App Protect, Administration Guide, and you can see the different installations. So CentOS, Red Hat, Debian, Ubuntu, uh, Alpine, Alpine, and Docker. Okay. So if I click on the Docker, same on the Docker, you have the Docker file, as you can see. And it's very easy because what you need is you need a key. When you subscribe to Nginx App Protect, because it's a subscription, okay, at the moment it's not free uh, because it's an advanced feature. So you need a key, and Nginx provide you with a cert and a key in order to connect to the the private repository, Nginx repository. Uh, then you just have to install uh, the APL, the, the WGate, but we don't care, and then you add 
you add the repo. Okay, this is our private repo. It's an Engine Express repo. Uh, and inside the repo, you just install app protect. It's very simple. Okay, so we, we just apt get install app protect. You install app protect. You install the NAP. Okay, so the NAP install so this command install the Engine Express and the NAP module because NAP is a module and we're going to see that. Okay. It's a module, it's not, it's not a package itself. Then the next step is to configure your, uh, your, your engineering support text. So let me show you. So here, so I, I, let me move the bar. This is a zoom bar, I guess you don't see it. So in my environment, my demo environment, I have an application, okay? So this application is deployed in Kubernetes because it's a modern environment, okay? So I guess you know what is Kubernetes. And this application uh, relies on four microservices. So let's have a look on the app itself. It's a banking application like that. And when I connect as a, as a consumer, as a user, uh, my traffic uh, is redirected to several services, several pods, okay? So on this page, it's not on, it's not, um, it's not um, a monolithic application, it's a microservice application. So the stocks here, the stocks uh, here, it's one Docker, the name is main. Okay, so it's try to remember what I what I explained because in the controller, in an app, we'll see the, this information. So main app, this is this part, the stocks. The, the app number two, up to it's a money transfer so it's where i can send money to my friends and then this traffic is going to another microservice another pod in the, in the kubernetes and i will explain you how but it's another pod and this one where i can refer my friend okay uh like that yeah it's a french keyboard perfect it's another microservice okay and this microservice is app free. And behind the scene, of course, I need a database to just to store the, the, the price, my, my balance, my, my money transfers. I need it. Okay, so this is the backend. So that's why we can see here for deployments, main app, backend, app to the money transfer, and app free, the, the refer friends. So far, so good. The app is deployed. It could be in the public cloud, private cloud. We don't care. Perhaps this, this microservice is deployed in AWS. I don't know. In order to route this traffic, it's a modern environment. So I use an ingress. Okay. So an ingress controller, it's an Nginx, but I could use anyone at the moment because there is no security. The ingress is just routing the traffic to the right service. Okay. So for information, I don't use a an, an FQDN, I use the path, the URI, okay? So if it is slash files, it's a backend. If it is slash API, it's money transfer. Okay, I know it's not, it's not relevant, but this is money transfer, it's slash API, it's application app two, and app three is app three, okay? So the ingress is the endpoint, is the VIP, and the ingress is just forwarding the packet to the right pods. Now I want to protect my app. So this application here now at this moment, so the KAS, as you can see, connecting directly to the Kubernetes cluster is not protected. So if I try to do a cross-site scripting, for instance, uh, yeah, now it's French keyboard. Ah, yeah, this one, like that. It is, is accepted, it works, and I can try another one, like, and I have a real attack because behind the scene, I know behind the scene here, so if I had Bob the Sponge, behind the scene here, it's, it's a SQL injection, okay? So Bob is already in the database, perfect. So I would do a SQL injection, and then the goal is to protect this microservice, okay? So the SQL injection pass, and you can see the SQL injection extract all the content of the database, okay? So Andrea, Bob the Sponge, Mathieu, Nico. So the, the attack works. Now let's deploy an Nginx app product. I have several ways to do it, okay? So for information, 
uh, we publish a, a lab guide. If you want to, to play with it in, in your lab, okay, just reach out to Andrea, to, um, to someone in order to get a license, a trial license. But we have here, we have a lab guide and I put it in a, put it in a chat because it's interesting for you, okay? This is the lab guide where I explain step-by-step step how to install uh, how to install an Nginx app protect. And let's do with the container, okay? I will not explain how to deploy it in an Linux. So the first things to do is to create your, uh, your Docker image. So as you can see, the Docker image is, is just a copy pass from the docs that I show you. So I will just build my image, okay? So the Docker build is here and let's go to my Docker machine, okay? So it's one thing to understand how it works, okay? And then I will go directly to a, to a CI CD pipeline. So if I do Docker images, uh, let me just zoom in. I guess it's too small. Tuck, 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 tuck. Up, you can see Docker images. I don't have an app protect image at the moment. So, but my Docker file is here, Docker file. So let's build it. Okay. Up. Uh, let me. Yeah, my, my sheet sheet is my lab guide that I built. <laughs> so up, I will build the image. In the meantime, uh, let's talk about the different way to deploy the Nginx app product. So this Docker image is in front of, okay, is in front of my, my Kubernetes. So on this, it's here, as you can see, I zoom in, yeah. My Kubernetes is here, it's, the application is up and running, but it's not protected. I'm deploying a Docker in front, okay? This is one way to, to, pro, to deploy an Nginx app product with a Docker, for instance, or by just installing the, the package. The next one is what I'm gonna do just after the Docker is to deploy the NAP here directly in my Kubernetes. And this is very interesting. So the NAP is available as an ingress controller, okay? So to do so, we provide here the documentation ingress controller for Kubernetes and a dedicated ingress controller with app product. Okay. So you have to create, of course, you have to build your image because it's a dedicated image for the ingress controller. And then we just add the CRD, okay, uh, the TRD, the definition, and uh, you know, the custom definition in order to use. This, uh, this app. So I will show you. Okay, I will show you because I prepared, I prepared an image for you. It's uh, in my uh, public, or my, my private repository. Okay, so so far so good. As you can see here, there are nine, uh, 160 packages to install. Uh, and if I scroll up, I would like to show you just the version, but perhaps I would not have it. No, I don't have it. Too late. It's too fast. Oh, it's here. App protect, okay. So app protect version two nine two nine two eight one. <laughs> it's it's late. It's the latest version. This version includes, for instance, the the bot protection. So now, or oh, let me just clear, okay, so that you can see well. Uh, so Docker images now have have an app protect running, an app protect image. So let's run the image. So. I need to run the image in this device, okay? So to do so, up, I would just copy past my, my command line is this one. So Docker run, okay? Port 80, behind the scene, it's port 80 as well. And I need at least one information, one file, nginx.conf. And I will show you this file, okay? So nginx.conf is just the configuration of the NAP. So, the file looks like that. Uh, looks like that. Sorry, I, I am on the wrong one. Yeah, here. I would try to do a more and I hope it will be good for you. Yeah, pretty good. This is an nginx.conf, okay? The traditional classic nginx.conf. But as you can see, into the server section, I define four lines to enable the app protect. So at the top, I just enable the module, app protect module. And at the bottom, in my, in my server section, app protect enable the policy file, 
It's not mandatory. For information, there is a default policy file included. It's a no app stop 10 policy file. It reduces the friction. It reduces the fault positive. It's a new way to, uh, to manage the, the fault positive. So it's not mandatory to have a custom one. And I have a log. And my log forward the, my log are sent to an ELK. This IP address, this port. That's it. Okay. The rest is the location. The location is the back end. Okay. The upstream. And it's, uh, it's my, um, my Kubernetes. Okay. With the same port as I show you. So now, Docker PS, you see, is here up and running. And now, if I go through the NAP, so it's a different FQDN. Now I'm protected. Okay. So if I try to do, uh, to do, like that, a cross-site scripting is blocked. Uh, if I tr and if I try to do the SQL injection as well, okay. So I'm navigating to the website to get some logs. Oh, sorry, because I want to show you some analytics. All good. Okay, and now let's open the Kibana. So as you can see, in two minutes, I guess I have an app deployed in in a, in a Linux at the moment. Okay. So my app is deployed, my app is working, my app is sending the logs to my ELK. You can see the logs here. And let's go directly to a, to a dashboarding. I have a dashboard. Yeah, okay, you, are, you can see the traffic here, we are good. I'm not lying. <laughs> it's not a video, it's a real, real lab. Um, so what I want, want to start with, uh, Shall I here? Yeah. The, the zoom bar is crazy. Yeah, let's go there. It's important to check some one thing. You see, these are my good traffic. These are my uh, blocked traffic, okay? non-legitimate traffic. And I don't know if you know F5. Okay, I don't know if you know the, the big IP itself, but NAP, as Andrea said, NAP is not a new project. Okay, we just took the best of our big IP WAF, it means the engine, okay? And we implemented the engine in the Nginx, very lightweight solution, uh, IGI, easy to deploy, easy to automate. So here uh, you can see the logs and the logs are exactly the same between an F5 big IP and an Nginx R product, okay? So if you are familiar with, with, with big IP ASM or big, big IP advanced WAF, it's the same product, by the way, uh you have you it's you can recognize the logs okay so i have the message that's important this is a request okay so if you have a look uh it's it's very late so i don't know where my highs but yeah it's here okay this is my uh, my violation okay it has been blocked uh, rejected of course and i can see the two signature ids it's important okay and the signature IDs are exactly the same between Big IP and Nginx as well. So it's consistent. And then I have the signature name, cross-site scripting, and the variation details. If the SecOps, the SOC, needs to go deeper in the variation, they can see where is the violation. And the violation is offset three, okay? So digit number three and up to seven digits. So we can find here pair violation. You can see exactly where is the, 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 the character for the violation. And I want to show you one more thing here. It's not a bot. So by default, and, and in my policy, there is no bot enabled because it's by default, the ending support is checking if it is a bot. To know if it is a bot, it's based on signatures, on the user agent, okay? On, the, on some requests or parameter, it's, it's, uh, it's based on signatures at the moment in the next version, and I will cover the, the future of Nginx, it will be more, more smart, smarter, okay? Uh, like in the advanced world. Okay, so the Docker is running, so far so good, it's blocking. Okay, this is one deployment. So it's not, honestly, it's not what we want usually, okay? Uh, when we deploy an app, most of the time it's either because we're looking for a lightweight WAF, okay, so NAP, manual deployment what like I did, or because I have a full, I have a full CI CD pipeline, pipelines uh, with the HES, and I want to implement this NAP into this pipeline. Okay. Uh, so in uh, 
I hope my GitHub is working. I didn't check. Yes, it's working. So let me zoom in uh, here. And I don't know if it's smooth for you. So in my GitLab, my GitLab is a repository, okay, where the, the security guys will upload the policies, the security policies, but it's as well my CI. And I will use GitLab CI. So for instance, what I did, uh, I created a pipeline in order to create a, a Docker image, push the Docker image to a, repo, a registry and deploy the, the container, okay? This is one example, it's a good start, okay? We go step by step. So what I'm gonna do to be sure I will not have a, 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 an error, I will remove the Docker, okay? So uh, Docker rm minus f app protect, okay? So, okay, so now the good Docker disappear and the Arcadia, this one, uh, Docker should not work anymore. Um, perfect, okay. So now let's go to GitLab. So step-by-step, step, because it's interesting to understand how a CI works, okay. You can see a lot of files, but it's not important. It's important to understand what I did. So first of all, let's have a look on the pipeline itself. So there are three stages. So the first stage is build an image. The second stage is push the image somewhere. And the last stage is run this Docker somewhere, okay? So the first one is build the image. So I want to build an image because uh, for instance, F5 and Genix provided with a new uh, attack signature package. As you may know, a WAF need signature uh, database, okay? Because the 80% of the attacks come from known attacks, okay? So it's based on a pattern, something that we know, like the script, like the SQL injection, it's something that we know. So we do have 6,000 signatures in the Nginx app product. So these signatures are updated every week, every two weeks, depends. So it's important to update the image in order to have always the latest version of the image. Okay, the latest version of the, the signatures. So what I do first, I just execute a command to ask to my repo, please tell me the, the version of the, the signature package, okay? So human info, because it's a centralized, human info, attack signature, and I just extract the date. Then based on the date, I will store this date in a tag. You know, a Docker image need a tag, like latest, okay, or development. In my demo, I will just put the date of the signature package as a tag. So it's very interesting, there is a new, package, I will have a new date and I will have a new image with this tag. So I build, I build the Docker. Okay, so I'm going to choose a Docker file, but I'll build the image with the tag, the date of perhaps today, I don't know, we are the 13th, I think, yeah. Let's see, I don't have any ID. Um, and then I export the variables, it's not important. Second step, I push the image into a registry. So I have a registry. In my lab, in my environment, I have a registry where I, where I can push a Docker image. So I push the Docker image to this registry with the tag. And the last step is Ansible playbook. So I run an Ansible playbook to start this Docker, okay? So I have a playbook, very simple, I'm going to show you uh, with uh, where I just defined the tag. So you can see GitLab CI is very easy. I'm honest with you, I'm not, I'm not a, a DevOps, okay? I'm, I'm a real SecOps uh, from the beginning. So I learned, I learned CI, I learned CI CD, I learned some tools like Ansible and GitLab, but I'm not an expert, so everyone can do it. So what is important here? First of all, you see here my, my keys, my license, okay? Because I need to connect to the private repo. The Docker file is here. The Docker file is just copy, passed from the website, the docs, okay? Nothing else. And then my playbook is here. And the playbook, as you can see, is very simple. It's just a playbook to run a Docker 
the name will be app protect the image is, is here you start it the port is 80 and don't forget to to map to nginx.com so it's exactly the same uh, execution has my command I did. So now let's run it. Okay. So let's go to CI CD pipelines um, and run the pipeline. And in the meantime, I will talk about something else. Okay. So you see build image, push image, run Docker. So it should be started. Yeah. It's, okay. Let's go. Okay. So the date is, oh, in demo god we trust it's today so for information yesterday i did a demo yesterday it was the 11th okay so we so far we have an update two updates in three days okay uh so he created the image it was very fast as you can see uh, because i guess there is no change in the other packages and uh, oh it's passed okay we push run so now let's have a look on the on the push this is my registry, okay? Uh, it's I use a I use a registry from a, I don't, it's Docker registry UI. I don't remember where I get it. You see, I get it from where well, from GitHub perhaps. Uh, but it's a nice it's a nice tool, and you can see the tag, okay? Uh, don't ask me about the date on the left. I don't know why. I guess it's because uh, there is no changes in the in the main in the main uh, uh, image, okay? Uh, since twenty three days. Only the only the package of the signature change, so so far so good. Okay, and then the uh, if I check, it should be there. Is running. Okay, you see, it's a new image now with the date of today because the signature package is from today. And if I get back to my app protect, it works. Okay, and I have the latest version of the signature package. So. As you can see, it's very easy, very simple. I have a CI, just a CI pipeline in from GitLab, but before two months ago, I used a Jenkins. Okay, but now my customer has me mature. We are more we're migrating to GitLab CI. Most of my customers are getting to me GitLab CI. So that's why I migrated to GitLab CI. Okay, so just Docker file, CI file, my keys, my engineers.conf, and my playbook. So not so complicated, okay? This is a manual for Docker. Next step, guys. Now, if you remember, I told you, and I get back to this screen, now I would like to deploy my app directly in my Kubernetes environment, my Kubernetes cluster, okay? So uh, to do so, I will use an ingress. So an ingress, just a reminder, I, I hope you know, and I guess you know, an ingress is uh, a container, okay, a pod running in the in a Kubernetes, and this pod this pod has an access to the externally, okay. So it's a way to publish applications. So in my no, I'm in my Kubernetes. These four services, these four deployment are not published, okay. They are internal in the cluster, and no one can access this service except if I publish them through an ingress. So, so far I have an ingress, but without the NAP. Now let's use, uh, let's deploy a new one with the NAP. So I show you on the docs, it's explained very well how to deploy, how to deploy an app. So uh, in an ingress, so I will go to my, to my server. So I have a Linux server where I can execute a uh, kubectl command line. This is, I name it CI CD server, but it's not a CI CD server, but I can execute kubectl, okay? So what I'm gonna do, I will first of all remove, uh, I think I got it in my history, yeah. I will just remove the current uh, ingress, okay? So, and I will show you the file, okay? No worries, I just delete the current ingress. So if I get back here, the ingress, is not there anymore, okay? There is no ingress and my namespace because it's a namespace, this one should be empty. Perfect. So now let's deploy a new ingress when it will be finished, a new ingress with the NAP enabled. So it's an ingress has to be configured. So let me just move that. I want to show you how it looks like. It's very interesting. If I remember well, I put it here. 
you see this one full ingress arcadia nap let's go there so more full ingress now so don't be afraid an ingress needs a lot of crd this is a definition okay so i didn't in, uh, guess okay i it's i copy past everything from the documentation this is these are the definition from a from a nginx so i copy past everything from nginx but at the end at the end i have one object uh, that is my ingress okay so this is definition 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 usually you don't put everything in the same file okay just for a demo for my team in a five i decided to put everything in one file usually we separate the files okay so we have the, the crd on one side your ingress on the other side and your policy on the on the other side on, on a, another object on the, on the other side so ts policy definition this is a WAF, de, a WAF definition you can see violations blah 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 it provided by five you know you can't uh, you can't guess and then here we are so this is my policy so in the previous example the policy was a json and i forgot to show you how it looks like and i hope i have one here where are you not on this one I forgot to show you the, the policy itself. So I will go there. Tuck. This is a policy. Okay, as you can see, this is a default one. So the default one, as you can see, is based on one template. It's an OWASP top 10 template. OWASP top 10 is a top 10 attack protection. Okay. So it's we only keep the most accurate signatures. We will not assign the signature that is not really accurate or that will generate a lot of false positive. So for instance, in France, there is a keyword uh, apostrophe OR. Okay. So it, in French, it means golden. So I let you imagine where the Golden Gate, Gondel Bridge, Gondel, Golden Cheese as well, the Golden City. So it's it's a pattern that always matches signature in France. So by default, this signature is not accurate. So we it requires more signatures, more variation to make it accurate. Okay. So if I just do an apostrophe R, it's not blocked, it just alerted, warning. But if I do apostrophe R, one equal one, oh, you got two variations here. Then we block it. This is the policy template nginx bait. Then blocking mode. So what I did here uh, in this tab, it's exactly the same, but instead of being a JSON, it's it's a YAML, okay? Because it's a YAML for the declaration. So policy template engineering base, the same, blocking mod, and here we added some violation, some custom settings just for the demonstration. So we enabled the data guard. Data guard is a, a, a a feature, I would say an engine that check the response from the server. And this engine hide, you know, with stars or, or dash sensitive data. So credit card numbers, it could be the phone numbers, social security numbers. Okay, so this is for the return, for the response back from the server. So I enable, I enable it. So this is my, my policy uh, in my declaration. The logs is here. I want to log everything even the good the good traffic it's a demo <laughs> and then this is my ingress so if you remember i show you i did show you the ingress at the beginning it was only a spec with the main with the main to the slash back into the fight blah, blah blah and now i have more lines okay so here in my ingress please enable the nap into the ingress okay because i don't want an external nap i don't want the docker i don't want the linux I want directly the directly my protection is my Kubernetes cluster or my OpenShift. Okay, it's exactly the same. So let me take my trick. I don't want to. Oh, I have, I have it in the history. Sorry, history. It's uh, this one. Uh, okay, so kubectl. Okay, so far so good. Apply. So far so good. And my YAML file. Cool. So now we have to wait. Okay. Um, where is Kubernetes? 
Usually it's a real time revenue ingress is easy one from eight seconds so far so good. And the ingress should be there. Okay, it's all green, very fast. So now I close this one because this one, the, this was the nap. We don't care about the nap in Docker. We get back to the Kubernetes directly, okay? You trust me? Directly to the Kubernetes on port 3274. This is directly my Kubernetes. And now let's try to do a new injection, now a script like that. Okay, so now this is block, blocked by the ingress. So I get back to my architecture. It's blocked by this guy directly in, in, a, in the cube, okay? Or in the open shift. And I can scale. I can scale my, my, my ingress. If I need two, three, four, five ingress, I can do it, okay? So it's very interesting. So now it's part of my ingress. So there is no external deployment or, or things to do. And as you, as you know, it can be fully orchestrated because it's Kubernetes. So this is a second deployment. I check the time. Yeah, we're good, I have time. So if I get back here, if I refresh, I have new traffic, good and bad, okay? Exactly the same, okay? It's, the difference is on one side it's JSON and the other side it's YAML, but it's exactly the, it's exactly the same product. Um, next, the NAP uh, protect against bot as I told you, okay? So let me show you how it looks like. So there are there are, let me check my, there are sort of categorization and here we are. So this is a policy file. So I think you, now you, you are starting to be confident uh, with, the, with uh, the policy file, the base, Nginx base, blocking state and bot defense enabled. Okay, so here, as you can see, the, the bot is enabled, but by default it's enabled. And I decided to make some changes. So, for instance, here, trusted bot alarm. A trusted bot is a good bot. For instance, what is a good bot? <laughs> a good bot is Google bot. Google bot is a good bot. Uh, and to do so, the, the engine it's a protect is doing a reverse DNS. This is a trick. How to know if, if a Google bot is a real Google bot coming from Google, okay? Because there is no signature, okay? There is no certificate to, 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 to sign. So when the bot make a request and say, oh, tell me your price, for instance, because Google bot has Google shopping, give me your price. What the NAP is doing, the NAP is checking if the source IP address belongs to Google. So we do a reverse DNS to check if this IP address belongs to a Google domain. This is a trick. This is a trusted bot. Untrusted bot is a bot that we, we do not trust, <laughs> like curl, okay? So a curl will be blocked. Uh, it's not trusted, it's untrusted. It's not malicious, but it's not trusted, okay? And the last one are the malicious. And the malicious bot are based on signatures like Nmap or like special, special bot uh, that try to extract information, exploit, they are, they are blocked. So, I just have to modify my, my JSON file, okay, my policy, and modify my nginx.conf in order to support this new file, and I'm good, okay? So this is how we protect against the bots. Mm. Last topics, yes. Uh, I have another CI CD pipeline to show you. Uh, I try to remember my agenda in my mind. Why are you here? So I I show you the the pipeline with Docker. Okay, it's one way to deploy, and there is another way if you want to deploy into a into a Linux, just a Linux, so same same architecture as this one. Okay, here, but it's a Linux. I'm gonna use. Ansible playbook, and we do provide F5. F5 do provide with Ansible role. Okay, so the module. 
So as you can see here, in my pipeline, this one, the first step is to install the requirements, then play the playbook. And the last one is a workaround because I have a DNS issue in this lab in AWS, so it doesn't matter in the real life. So let's have a look on this file because this file is very important and I, I'm going to show you how it's so easy to deploy an app, okay? Just with Ansible. And to be honest, Ansible is very easy to learn. If you run it on your laptop, it's very easy. So if I go to my requirement, I just tell, please install the Nginx, the Nginx Plus and Nginx App Product. The, just this one is enough, okay, for, for, for the Nginx App Product. This, the Nginx is included in the Nginx App Product. So I just install the, the role, okay, from, from GitHub, and then I can play with it. And let's have a look how it works. I think it's this one. No, sorry, this one, yeah. This is what we provide. So on the GitHub, there is one file, only one, this one, and you have to fill it, okay? So by question number one, I would say, do you want the NAP enable? Yes, NAP enable. Uh, delete the license, delete the Nginx uh, CRT, Nginx.key? No. Install the latest signature? Yes. Install the latest thread campaign? Yes. What is a thread campaign? And I will do the demo. And the thread campaign are rules push every day by five so that the NAP has very, very, very accurate signatures. You remember my example with apostrophe OR? It's not accurate, okay? Because it's a pattern. Thread campaign come from the, the, um, the third, okay? So the, the uh, what the name? Security um, a team, reverse engineering team in F5. These, these guys in F5 uh, do reverse engineering. They do, uh, they are connected to the dark net. We have bot network, we have onipotent network. And these guys analyze the threat and how our servers, only put in servers, has been pawned, okay? And then when they see that one guy, one bot managed to enter into the system, they just do forensic, reverse engineering, and say, okay, he managed to enter the same with this, 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 and that. And this is a rule, okay? So a rule is very accurate because it mimic exactly how the guys managed to enter the system. So threat campaign is not signature, it's rules. So this is included by default in NAP. Uh, so yeah, configure template uh, on the security blocking state. And these are my syslog and the certificate, the keys actually. Okay, that's it. I don't need more, I just need that. And just with that, just with this file, just with the CICD pipeline and just with an Ansible playbook and the playbook was there, you can see a YAML playbook and a role. That's it. If I run it, it will install Nginx App Protect on any Linux uh, machine. Okay, so it's so easy. And you can find the files into my lab guide that I put in a chat, okay? So feel free to go to the lab guide, build your own. Just ask us the li trial license. We'll be very happy to share trial license with you. Uh, but Try, try enter to the DevOps world, okay? Try to use NAP in CI CD. It's so powerful and so easy, okay? So requirements easy. If you remember, install the role, deploy the NAP in demo God I trust. So you can see blah, 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 blah. So connecting to the Git, of course, it is downloading the files from the Git. Uh, it's gathering fight. Okay, it was long. And then this, this is the role. And don't ask me how it works. I don't know, okay? So the role is there to install all the prerequisites and all the app protect with the right information I provided in my viable file, okay? Remember with the, the file to fill, blah, blah, blah. Okay, some information. Da, 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 da. And la, and I, I switched to French, sorry. And here, install the latest app signature, protect signature. The, uh, the app protect center. This is the longest, uh, biggest package. I, I remind you 6,000 signatures to install, okay? So it was fast to install the, 
The app protect, but the signatures, it's longer. And at the end, we're going to have one Linux somewhere with NAP. OK? Yeah, thread campaign should be pretty fast. And um, all good. OK? Blah, 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 blah. And restarting. Cool. So this is something that you should have somewhere in your in your lab, in your laptop. Every time you want to deploy an app, you see you just run it from somewhere. Okay, if you don't want to use CI, you can just use Ansible, it's good enough. Playbook, Ansible playbook, and uh, run it, and your, your, your app is installed. No need to copy past um, all the command line. Job done. Cool. And now it's my workaround, okay? Because I have a DNS issue. There is no DNS server in, a, in this environment. So I had to do a trick um, for that. Uh, should be finished. Yeah. Mm, 6 p.m. Uh, I'm thinking about one more thing. All good. Pass. It's installed. Perfect. So if you want to see the outcomes, I push the configuration to, uh, to a CentOS, okay? Uh, CentOS, it's this one. So I push to uh, this one. I push to this device. And now what is interesting, so I should have an Nginx. Yeah, version 23, cool. I should have an Nginx folder. And I have the most important thing, nginx.conf. OK, so more nginx.conf. This is pushed by, by my pipeline. OK, going to the, to the Kubernetes as well. The, as you can see, the, the sorry, looking for my words, the NAP is enabled, the log is enabled, but I, do not, I didn't define a specific policy. I use a default one, OK? So if I do not specify the policy, it's a default OWASP top 10 policy with the four lines, if you remember. This is the, the policy I use. Uh, and let me show you the last things. That's why I run this one. Uh, where are you? Uh, protect security policy. Ah, it's there. I was looking for this one. So, NAP and ISA protect is as well is as well an API protection WAF, an API firewall, and how it works. It's very simple. This is a policy for API, OK? So it's still based on the Nginx base template, OWASP top 10. But I have an option here, as you can see, to specify a Swagger file. So what is a Swagger file? A Swagger file is a definition of my API. And this application has an API. Let me show you. Up. Let's go to my Swagger file. So I host my Swagger files into, into Swagger up. So I put this link in the chat. Okay, it could be interesting for you if you want to see what is a Swagger file. So this is a Swagger file. So you can see there are four URI and only four, not five, only four. And it's trading, rest, buy stock. Okay, to buy stocks. Okay, sell stocks. Make transaction. This is app number two, the money transfer on the right. Uh, no, sorry. This is just a, execute money transfer on the right. And this is just to get to see my um, to see my transaction. So what we can do is we just have to refer to this Swagger file into my JSON file, my policy file, OK? So I just have to pass the link. As you can see, it's link, swagger hub, blah, 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 dot JSON. OK, this is my swagger file. And what the, what the NAP will do, the NAP will download the, the Nginx file. So the, I will, the, sorry, will download the swagger file. So NAP will connect to swagger hub. It could be a GitHub. It could be everything you want. It could be locally in the NAP if you want. It could be a registry in, in OpenShift. We don't care. It will read the YAML. It's a YAML file for my case. You read it, say, okay, I have four URI, 
and I have three parameters or perhaps more for the buy, I have five parameters to create three integers to string. And as you can see, it's very powerful because at this moment, the NAP knows exactly what is allowed. Trading, rest, buy stock, and inside the post, it's three, param three parameters, three JSON parameters, and for each of them, the, for the, the format, okay, the type. So as you can see, it's very accurate. So this is API protection, is part, part of the NAP, okay? So very, very powerful and very straightforward because we do have a Swagger file, open API file. If you don't have it, much more difficult because you have to create it or you have to create everything manually in the JSON policy file. And honestly, it's impossible, okay? So you need this file so that the NAP can download it. And that's it, okay? So this is NAP. Uh, I would like to cover one more thing. Uh, it's something new. Uh, so I will switch to another lab. And uh, yeah, I close the wrong tab. It's how to manage an app from an Nginx controller. I'm not, I'm not talking about the ingress controller. Okay, I'm talking about the Nginx controller. The Nginx controller is a solution provided by Nginx, and this solution is a, a, like a, a management solution, okay? A, it's, it's managing the, the control plane. So we name it controller app security, and let me show you. Okay, let me show you how it looks like, and you will, uh, you will understand, okay? So I copy the login and the password, and let's go. So in that case, already connected perfect let's zoom in a little bit so the controller is adopting and managing the nap so so far i deploy my nap everywhere in a docker in a line in a centos in an ingress into the control in the, the kubernetes but if i want i can adopt these instances okay by the controller so i start i start the instances Okay, so it's important to understand the controller will not deploy this instance. Okay, so my CI CD, my Terraform, for instance, but will deploy a new Nginx a protect somewhere, like in the CentOS, if you remember with my CI CD pipeline. And these instance will connect to the controller. Okay, okay, like a phone home. Okay, we connect to the controller, say, okay, guys, I'm here, I'm ready, I'm a NAP version 2.3, and I want to be adopted by you and it's here, okay? So this NAP has been adopted by the controller. It's an instance at the moment, that's it, okay? Just an instance. If I click on it, on the right side, I can see it's a, uh, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's a CentOS, okay? With an agent uh, 1.19, perfect. So this is an instance. The next step now is say, okay, I don't want to work. I don't want to work with a JSON file. I want to work with the nginx.conf file. It's too complicated. I want to use a graphical user interface. And then in my controller, I go to the services. And this is where we configure everything. Okay. So I could spend two hours on this solution, but I will not. We don't have time. So what I need, first of all, I need to create an application. An application is a bucket. Okay. There is no configuration in an application. It's just a bucket and inside this bucket, we will add configurations, okay? We'll add some object. So I created an application named Web Application Arcadia. So far, so good. Okay, so I'm, I'm inside my application and now I need to configure this application. So Arcadia, if you remember, so let me give me one second to connect to the right Windows machine for this lab because it's another it's another tenant. Let's go there. I will remind you the application, how it works. And I hope you will make the links between the NAP, the control, and the, the application. So, so far, so good. Cool. 
So it's exactly the same application, okay? We, in F5, we use the same application in every use case so that we have consistency when we do demonstration with, with our partners and with our customers. So uh, this is Arcadia, it's here. So I'm connecting directly to the, to the Kubernetes and I will go directly to there and I will show you what I did, okay? So as a reminder, remember main application, the stocks, application two, the money transfer, application three, the invite friends and the backend at the backend. So what I did in the controller, I say, okay, now I don't want to create the, 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 the YAML file or the JSON file. So I want, I want to configure everything from the graphical interface. So I will create component. A component is an nginx.conf, but from a graphical standpoint. So here I created in advance because it takes time because I have to define the FQDN, the port, so that's why I did it in advance, but let's have a look on the main one, on the main app. I said, give a name, main app, select the gateway, select the instance, map, okay, I have only one, but uh, if I have plenty of instances everywhere in multi-cloud, I can select my gateway here, okay, my instance. So it's this one. A URI, so please listen on send to us that arcadia.finance.io. So in my demo, I have to go to this FQDN and then I have to create a workload. So a workload is the back end, okay? So now I'm sending the traffic directly to the, to the, to the service, okay? So I'm sending directly the service to main app. I'm not sending the traffic to Arcadia, to the ingress because I don't need the ingress anymore. I'm sending the traffic directly to the, to the service. So this is my service. It's menapp.nginxudf internal, blah, blah, blah. And of course you can imagine, I have, an, I have a DNS for, uh, internally uh, to resolve this FQDN, okay? So this is my workload. This is the backend. Then I have some option, advanced option for uh, option in ingress, backend monitoring and and the security, okay? So at this moment, uh, if I go to this one, centos.arcadia.finance.io, okay? So my traffic arrived to this instance. Just to explain you, this instance is outside the cluster, okay? I could have deployed this instance inside the cluster, but I decided to put it outside the cluster. Anyway, uh, it should not be protected, okay? So, yeah, oh. It's an English keyboard, sorry. Hopla, uh, if I try, yeah, this one, this one is an attack. The attack pass, okay? So the, the script arrives to the server, the server responds back with nothing because there's nothing to attack, but you accepted the request. So, so far so good, you can see it works. If I try to log in, my, my instance, my, oh, my single instance, because I have only one instance, is routing the traffic to the right, to the right, service in Kubernetes because I have defined in the workload the destination, but the security is not enabled at the moment, okay? So what I'm gonna do, this is the main, uh, yes, is the main one. Yes, is the main app. I will enable the app. So at this moment, the controller will send a new configuration file to the instance and say, okay, now enable the app. okay? So it will add the famous line, if you remember, app protect enable through app protect logs, blah, blah, blah. It will enable everything. If I want here, I have an option to disable some signatures like the apostrophe OR, okay? So I need to know the number, okay? It's a two, na, 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 na. This is the ID of the signature, okay? So I will just enable the WAF and submit. At this moment, the controller, as you can see, compile the configuration, push the configuration to the instance and restart the daemon of, not restart, reload, sorry, reload the daemon. Okay, so the current connection has not disconnected. It's configured. So now the instance for, for the main app and only for the main app, only for the main app is protected, okay? So, I will get back to the main page. I will refresh to be sure I have a new TCP connection. And now if I try to do bad, bad stuff like this one, I'm blocked. 
okay? Because the traffic arriving to the main uh, component, the main app component has an app enable. So it's blocking my traffic, okay? But uh, the other microservices, so this one is still main, so it will be blocked if I try to do a SQL injection. But this service, for instance, I could try somehow or with an API to send an attack is not protected. Okay, so I can try to do a lot of things or I can upload a file. I can try to upload something uh, um, bad, it will pass. Okay, so from the controller, now I can enable or disable the WAF. As, we, as you noticed, I guess there is an option to put it in transparent mode, monitor only. Okay, it will not block the traffic. This is the first version of the CAS. Okay, so on one side we have the NAP, a lot of acronyms. The NAP, uh, this is the instance, the Nginx app protect, and the controller app security, the CAS, is the control plane, the manageability of the of the of the NAP. If we want, it's not mandatory. If if we want, but as you can notice in this version, this is the first version, uh, we cannot customize the policy. Okay, so it will be in a, this is the version three dot. 12, I think, yeah. The version 3.14, so it's one per month, okay? 14 or 15, I don't have the commitment. We will be able here to upload a JSON file for the policy, okay, for the policy. For the rest, it's still graphical, okay? So I could here upload a JSON file for my policy. And ar around June, we will be able to uh, to upload as well the Swagger file for API protection, okay? So at the moment, um, there is uh, in the API, let me try to show you if I manage to do it. No, I don't, oh, I, don't have, I don't have a license on this one. I don't have the license. On the left side, I could have API M and the API M is, is, um, is the API uh, management with the dev portal. There is no protection at the moment. It will be in, uh, in June. So the, the, the CAS honestly is amazing, is uh, so easy to deploy. And of course we have a lot of metrics, but I don't have a lot of traffic. So it's not so sexy to show, but we can see per application, per bucket. And if I go to, uh, to my security, I have more information about my security and I can see the trends from the, 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 no, the good traffic, the malicious traffic or suspicious traffic. So this is the analytics and I have as well the event. This event is from, you see from 614, this is the one I did and I have exactly the same logs as the Kibana, okay? With my two signatures ID as pair. So honestly, looking forward to seeing the, the, the next version of the cast because we have one version per month with a lot of new features coming up. So uh, yeah, so for instance, we're gonna have as well the, the external logging for syslog. At the moment it's Splunk, HTTP connector to Splunk. Maybe we're gonna have for the controller as well the, the syslog in UDP and TCP very soon. Uh, you manage a certificate as well from, from, the, from the controller. And uh, the last one is analytics, but uh, this is uh, the top analytics and you can create your own dashboard but I don't have one on this on this lab. But a dashboard is a uh, is something you create by uh, by adding widgets. Okay, so I think it's not new for you. Very easy. You go to the component. You select your component. So let's say I want to see the the HTTP request count. Okay, type HTTP request. You select if you want a, a chart or just a number. I want a chart. I want the max. I can have some filtering and I can create and I have my, my tile, okay? So you create tiles in your dashboard. This is amazing, I like it. Uh, so, Adrian and Andrea, I think, I think I covered the topic I wanted. Um, I prepared if you want, I prepare a deck for you guys to see the future of Nginx, where we go, okay? Because uh, honestly, we, as, you, as I told you, it's one release per month for the NAP, one release per month for the CAS. So 
Uh, let me give me one sec and I prepared a few slides for you uh, on the on the future of Nginx. Okay, so it's not confidential. That's why I can do it. Uh, Fantastic. And in the meantime, of course, uh, to all of our attendees, uh, if you have any questions, please feel free to uh, submit them on the Q&A box. Uh, our, uh, our panelists will be very glad to answer them. So, uh, share screen, uh, this one. Yeah, so this is how, how a customer architecture looks like. Okay, so on the right side, we have a customer, a user. On the left side, we have the application. Okay, so you can see the monolithics or the microservices. And of course, we have a lot of actors here. Most of the time, the customer try to consolidate uh, vendors, okay, in order to not duplicate solutions and tools. But the goal is to try to, to consolidate with F5 and Nginx, of course. So that's why we can do magic stuff like that. But this is a, this is a dream, of course. The customer never deploy everything with one vendor. So few customers in the world do that. But it's a good opportunity to show you uh, how how F5 and Nginx work together to just to provide the perfect path application, okay, the perfect path to the application. On the right side here, you can see my mouse on the right side, uh, we have the, the hedge, okay? So it's mainly the networking protection, so cloud services and server line from F5, okay? DDoS, DNS protection, stuff like that. Then when we enter into the data center or when we enter in the first edge of the public cloud, we have the F5 premium solution, the big IP. Okay, so big IP is, I, is a premium solution because it's a lot of features. Uh, it's, it's not lightweight. <laughs> it's not lightweight, it's heavyweight. So it's a, big, it's a big solution in terms of footprint, but with a lot of capabilities. Okay, so that's why we put this solution at the edge. And then we have the SSL offload done in hardware. We have advanced web with advanced bot protection. We have a nice, we have all integration with our acquisitions like shape. Uh, we have as well the access management. If, if I want to authenticate against Azure AD with Okta, MFA, blah, blah, blah. And the DDoS, of course. And then I arrive to the app. Okay, I'm very close to my Kubernetes clusters or my AKS, my EKS. So this is where Nginx fits perfectly, okay? And then you can see where where we are, because Nginx is not only Nginx Plus or an app. Nginx is Nginx Plus. It's uh, the kick, the ingress controller. It's a nap. It's a controller on, on the top. It's unit. And very soon it will be, and I will show you a SaaS solution. Okay, so we have a lot of things, okay, in a, in a, in the past. So if I represent on a chart where we are, we started, few years ago, just with the mod security on OSS. Then we, we, we released the Nginx Plus in order to have a commercial model with support, with supported modules, like for instance, OpenID Connect, okay? And you want the Pixie support. Yeah, you, it's done by developer in Nginx. So of course it's part of the commercial model. So that's why we had the, the Nginx Plus. Then the mod security on Nginx Plus and now the Nginx app product. Okay, so we released these last year. Uh, then the controller arrived, okay, on the side, uh, only with Nginx Plus. And last month, we announced the CAS, the Nginx controller app security. So today we are there, okay, we are there. And what is coming up in Nginx, okay, so it's not a commitment, it's just a vision on this slide. We're gonna have some, some advanced technology. That's why we see the brain here. It's behavioral protection. Okay, so we have in F5, okay, in F5, we have behavioral engine in order to protect against uh, malicious requests and, uh, and users. This is uh, engines that are, that, is, that are coming into the Nginx world and infrastructure. Okay, so as you can see, the more we go to the top right, the more we're going to have advanced feature and smarter engine. And the goal is to make the deployment and the manageability very easy. By deployment, I mean, I want a new instance, I click, I have a new instance. I want to scale, I click and I scale out. 
uh, I want to lift and shift. And as you may know, we announced an acquisition on last week with Volterra. So if I want to lift and shift my NAP from the Paris office to my Geneva office with Andrea, it's it's just one click in my in my Volterra dashboard. Okay, so this is where we go. Okay, this is where we go. This is where we want to make the the edge computing. This is how it, it's named easy to deploy and maintain. Okay, and more and more and more in the cloud. Okay, because the customer deploy in a cloud now, public cloud, hybrid cloud. This is where the customer uh, want to go. So yeah, this is strategy. So. If we do a meetup in three months, I will have two more versions to show. So on the cast and on the app. So stay tuned. Re uh, register to the to the newsletters. Okay, on engineers. Uh, com. Yeah, it's a good one. <laughs> not the, not the, the open source one. Uh, and and honestly, subscribe to the GitHub as well. A lot of information are on the GitHub. So GitHub io.org.com slash nginx inc okay and and then you get um, all the, the latest update from uh, from uh, from nginx great thanks mathieu it's been absolutely fantastic great uh, great demos great information um so i don't know if we have some questions from the attendees uh i don't think so at least nothing has popped up uh, so very quickly, very quickly, I wanted to announce we are going to set up the third meeting very soon. It will be for March. Uh, we're going to uh, add it to the meetup group uh, in the next few days, next few weeks. So please stay tuned. And uh, since there are no questions, I suppose it is safe to say, well, somebody says, thank you very much. It was a very quick primer in Kubernetes. That's a but it, that's indeed the case. That was very, very cool. But it's very nice to see all of these pieces connecting together and how Nginx can help. It's really, really enlightening. So thank you so much to you, Magnus, for having uh, participated. And of course, thanks to Andrea. Thanks, Mathieu. Uh, th great content. S s uh, fantastic session in any case. And uh, to all of our attendees, see you in two months for the third edition of the Nginx uh, Meetup uh, Zurich. Uh, thank you so much, everyone, and uh, have a very nice evening, and see you soon. Bye-bye. Thank you, Adrian. Thank you. Bye, everyone. Bye-bye, everyone.